We are now joined by Kim Smith for Adventures in Coaching, who's got some fantastic advice for us about our careers. Welcome to the show, Kim. Thanks so much, Ben. It's great to be here. Well, it's great to have you. So we've been talking a lot about finding purpose and really kind of orienting ourselves in our careers, but we're changing gears now to talk a little bit more about groups and teams and kind of how to coach as a group. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, great. Yes, and we have been talking a lot about the individuals and purpose and change and all of that, but um, I also do a lot of coaching with businesses and teams, and I wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, initially what the difference is between a group and a team. And while I do a lot of group coaching, group coaching can often be around topics, um, but you're really working on yourself as an individual, whereas when I coach a team, it's a team that has come together to work collectively on a bigger purpose, to kind of work on you know, what they can do, what, how it would be more powerful for them to work as a team versus individuals. So instead of like a collaborative coaching session where you've got multiple people there kind of working on their own things a little bit as a group, you're focusing more on the teamwork dynamics specifically. Exactly, and not every group can become a team. A team is really there for a, a specific purpose. So say, for example, you're in an organization and you suddenly have a competitor you know, rise up in the market or um, there's something that you need to look at um, internally. But it's there, you have a specific purpose and it can be multifunctional people. You can have interdepartmental people. Um, you can have an executive team. But it's really a team that's set up for a collective purpose. That totally makes sense. So how does a team coaching session then differ from a group coaching session? Are there specific differences the, with the way you approach things? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll focus more on the team part of it because um, when I have a team, we sit there and initially, you know, I'm there as a coach to kind of figure out from an unbiased standpoint, you know, what is it that the team is wanting to do? What, what does the team uh, need to accomplish? What is the team's job and why? Um, we'll also go through a series of steps like, you know, who are the stakeholders? And your stakeholder can be, you know, your customer. It can be an internal uh, leadership team. Um, it could be society as a whole. It just really depends on the team. But considering um, what the stakeholder needs is very, very important in a team coaching environment. So how do you go about identifying the stakeholders' needs there? Is there a specific process that you go through? A yeah, checklist? that's a great question. Um, well, I mean, I think it's really a matter of, of um, either you talk to the stakeholder directly and you can bring them in. Um, I also you know, forgot to mention sometimes a board is a very big stakeholder. So you could have that stakeholder come in and say, hey, from your team, from your organization, what I need is this. But often we don't have access to that or maybe we don't have time for a lot of focus groups or something like that. So I just simply say bring a chair and put it in the room and put the stakeholder's name on that chair. And we can imagine and kind of you know, creatively brainstorm what that stakeholder needs. Totally makes sense. So once you've kind of identified those stakeholders' needs with the team, then how do you and the team then kind of work towards orienting yourselves to those goals? So yeah, that's, that is a great question. So we want to figure out like, what is it that they need? What is it that we're trying to do? Is it you know, speed to market? Are we trying to develop a new product? Are we trying to be innovative? You know, it depends on the team and what it is that you need to do. So we look at those things and set those goals up and make sure that we have timelines and everybody has a specific role within that team where we're all accountable for that. And a coach will help to hold that team accountable. Um, and the other thing that really comes up a lot in teams are team dynamics, right? We all bring ourselves to work every day. And like I've been talking about in previous sessions, you know, limiting beliefs can hold us back from being successful. And that can also really derail a team as well. So, you know, when I notice that that's going on, you know, I might do some individual one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, but also just really try to figure out, you know, what is everybody's strengths and what are they bringing to the table so that we can all be on the same page and not in a competitive situation with each other. That seems pretty obvious there. Like clearly, <laughs> I mean, like if, if the team isn't gelling together as mm -hmm. individuals, it seems like that can 
be a huge challenge. Are there any other major challenges that you think teams commonly face beyond just the interpersonal cohesion of the team? Oh, absolutely. You know, I think goals and having uh, measurable goals and KPIs, which is uh, an acronym for key performance indicators, it's important that we highlight and outline what those are and what those mean so that we can do that checks and balances and look back to say like, hey, are we meeting our goal of X? And are we, you know, meeting our goal of Y? And looking at, you know, if so, great, how do we keep doing that? And if not, what do we need to reassess? And also having that, you know, those, those measurement, sorry, measurements be uh, time bound so that we don't just have this, you know, never ending timeline. Like if we need to know in 30 days how something is doing, let's check back. You know, what is our bigger goal? Is, are we a team for a year putting this project together? Um, but it really depends on, you know, what those goals are, but measure, measure, measure. That's, you know, I, that's a big one. Well, and it seems to me that as you start to develop those timelines and mm -hmm. create a system that allows individual members of the team to evaluate their own progress and see where they fall in in the team's progress, it seems to me like that's a key component to functioning well as a group or as a team. Yes, absolutely. You know, and I, as a coach, I, I think it's really important to check in with everybody. Um, we can always revise something if something's not working, if, you know, maybe there's some personality or dynamics that aren't working, you know, taking a step back and, you know, just because we said that the goal and the purpose is this at the very beginning doesn't mean that we can't have flexibility to change and pivot a little bit as we gain more information. So if we've got those interpersonal issues more or less worked out and we've yeah. got a strong deliverables and a timeline set up mm -hmm. with that evaluation system in place, are there any other major hurdles that you would expect a team to encounter? You know, I think it's just like every day in life, right? Things come up and, and things that we can't anticipate. You know, but it's great if we do like a SWOT analysis. I don't know if you've heard about what I that haven't. is, but it's, it's an analysis that we look at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats from both inside the company and outside the company. And we can't always anticipate those, but when those come up, like, do we have the agility and the flexibility to, to pivot and to shift and to, you know, quickly determine what we need to do to address that problem? Well, and I would imagine that through that process, you really help coach the team to be ready for and have a little bit of preparation in mind for those challenges that might unexpectedly arise. What, what do you recommend for teams to kind of help them prepare for the unexpected? Well, I think that it's really about, you know, be, be prepared for the unexpected. You know, you cannot, you know, anticipate everything, but to be flexible. And a lot of times in businesses, we get very sort of, you know, sort of stuck in what we do with our processes. But if we're in a team that has the idea and the purpose of being flexible and agile and all of that, we can quickly shift and find out, do we need different resources? Do we need different people on the team? You know, what do we need to, to do to make those adjustments? Yeah, awesome. It seems super, super helpful. If my team or somebody else who is watching's team needed some help from you, where could they find some more information? Yeah, great question. Go to my website, adventuresincoaching.com, and I have a page specifically dedicated to team coaching. Well, perfect. Well, Kim Smith, thank you so much for joining us. And we will be right back after some short thank you. messages.